Howdy everybody, my name is Taffy Lemon and welcome back to another episode of Ace Attorney. Uh, it's been a while, I took a week off for vacation, but now I am back and ready to go. You guys won't see the break, because I am very behind in my upload schedule, but that's fine. Um, but last we left off, we were about to get into the trial. I'm very excited for that, I completely forgot all the clues that we got though, so. We'll see how well this goes. <laughs> I also did not do vocal warm-ups before this because I'm a dumbass. But I am also kind of pressed for time here, so... But uh, yeah, let's get into it. Oh, and real quick before the video starts, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Cool, thanks. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Fuck, I forgot her voice. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia, but there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. This girl! My first trial without a Faye helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. About time. <laughs> Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Eggsworth. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Why is it that every word that comes out of his mouth is, like, vaguely gay? I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgement to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well. Mr. Agdworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow! He's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Eggsworth. What the fuck is a professional witness? What do you mean by that? <laughs> The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen. I can't get over that name, it's so fucking weird. <laughs> hmm, haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, uh, and for you... I have a festival. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Uh, and you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunch box? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, your honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. I don't know what the fuck that is. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? 
name profession now. <laughs> I see his never-ending troubles with getting his witnesses to state their names. Continue. <laughs> Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Eichler? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I am not finished eating. Hurry it up! Mm, very well, Mr. Eichler. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, huh? What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? Miss Starr was a detective? Uh ha! -huh. I know who you are. Cough up? Cough up Queen Angel Star, your honor. Long time no see. Very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block and the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, your honor. I, d I was about to say, is that fucking obvious? Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, your honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm, it seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, your honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, your honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? Yes, Phoenix. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. But I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm, bring a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. <laughs> As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. What? <laughs> so, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I am still thinking about that. It, it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Fucking finally. Everyone in this courtroom is so verbose. How do you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime. Yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to a tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, <laughs> Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. If I had been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. 
To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Unbiased my ass. Very well, you may continue, Miss Star. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. That boyfriend? You have several? Yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? Jesus Christ. The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I'll stick with the lung juice, thanks. Note to self. The judge had to think before replying. <laughs> The security guard room is in the lot in A block. That was really hard for me to say for no fucking reason. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. You sense something, so you're saying you had a premonition of the murder. This felt like... how would you say? Oh yes. It was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. It's okay, Judge, I don't know either. <laughs> Speaking of a detective's intuition, was the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. Uh, young cheese. A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. They must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. By Garish Carr, you mean Mr. Edgeworth's car? Yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's. Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Indeed, it was. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant. I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony you clearly say the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. Oh, far you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That... that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. Could you call it plagiarism? <laughs> I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. A, a photograph. You took this. Why was this not presented to the court earlier? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? <laughs> Think again. Remind me again why we aren't throwing her out because she's a biased witness. Remind me again why people don't like uh, recognize that. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly a defendant. Uh oh. That is unmistakably Lana's guy. 
So, what was the defendant doing at the time? Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. Y you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. So about that. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike now. Hmm, <clears throat> the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes, the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Miss Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Starr's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. D don't smile like that! Very much question. <laughs> okay. What all do we have again? Can I look at the floor plans again? Is there like a thing where we know where she parked? I literally have nothing here. I'm so confused. It's gotta have something to do with this. I've got no fucking idea. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Fuck. I don't know what the fuck is happening, dude. I haven't been this stuck in a trial in a long time. I'm gonna try something incredibly ballsy here, so I'm gonna save. But we can't verify her claim of. This is the only thing I can think of doing, because it has no prints, so we can't verify that claim. Fuck! There has to be something here. Um, figured. I don't have anything. There's fucking nothing. I skipped through some of the prior information about like the layout here. Where was her car? I literally have no idea what I'm doing. Still doing something incredibly ballsy once more. This is gonna fucking suck to edit. That was it? I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Can you witness this? You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my first salmon swirl lunch. Hmm. I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But, is that odd? Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took of the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Skye not holding a knife? <clears throat> Mr. Rick, with your thoughts. <laughs> no fanfare. Objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet, it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, this is something. 
What do you mean, Mr. Ashworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. And how can you tell that? Blood spider. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph. Ah, oh, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you gonna just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Uh, you got a better idea? <laughs> Wait, that contradicts with the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. That's it. If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold calculating. Like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Oh, they are wearing gloves. Okay. Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Uh, that's what I'm saying, Phoenix. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves. The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. Fuck, that was weird. Why did I pronounce it like that? In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ugh. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. She can prove this claim the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. How could they be sure that Exeruth would have arrived on time? Three minutes. They couldn't have been sure. I'm going to be very, very ballsy. I don't have anything else. I don't. I just fucking don't. Maybe this? Nope. I don't have anything. Uh, what do I do? Okay, so they're saying the matter. The murder is premeditated. I'm saying it wasn't, but how do I fucking prove that? No one would believe me, and they shouldn't. I'm just gonna present everything and keep saving and loading until I get it right. The, the knife was the thing? Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunch boxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? Bloody murder weapon, a red car, all belong to the prosecutor there. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? <laughs> 
last fucking question. The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you say that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. The knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. I feel really stupid now. <laughs> order, order, order. Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister is good as free. Good job, Phoenix. <laughs> oh god. Cocky ass experts here to rain on my parade. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. It's couldn't care less. Not could care less. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing- I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? I don't like Angel, she's annoying. <laughs> Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? <laughs> In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. I'm sorry that I can't fucking read consistently today. I don't know what's going on. I haven't recorded in like a while. Speaking of which, I hope the um, audio is okay. And that is where you are wrong, honey. I swear to god, Edgeworth, if you update this one. You say she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moth surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! You're right. Good show, Mr. Richworth. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. It was ketchup, wasn't it? But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So you're saying you mistook something for blood. When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Swear blood from her victim. 
That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. My voices are all over the place today. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Her red muffler? Yes, like a scarf. The chief prosecutor always wears one around her neck. So she can be easily hanged at a moment's notice, I suppose. She's right. This guy was wearing a red scarf, wasn't she? But wait. Isn't it odd that you mistook that for splatter blood? Well, people often mistake my beard for bib. A church with a bib. That's why this place feels so much like kindergarten sometimes. <laughs> Fucking mood, Phoenix. Got the I work with children vibes. Actually, I do think I saw some traces of blood on her chest. However, the autopsy report is clear on this matter. There was only one knife wound. Apparently, Miss Starr isn't entirely sure of her own testimony. Mr. Wright, this is our chance! Chance for what, I wonder? Miss Starr has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact! I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and even a really short wick would burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. Is she even wearing it? No, she wasn't. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. V what? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. Edgeworth, let me have my moment. You've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? What that? That can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations, perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection, chopped liver? But it was there, a scarf. No, not that, but something red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well. Witness, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? How the fuck are people reading Phoenix's mind? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Ugh, oh, my eye is bugging. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, uh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's why. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape. But against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I shrug like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. <laughs> Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. 
Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. I'm proud of her, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Kill me. <laughs> Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you will. How about I don't? So where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite an accurate thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? You say quickly, were you close to the suspect? How? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details. Yes! I'd like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. The lunch line car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here. That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing! The cop up queen, lunch lady athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence, so she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence is about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? By memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing. <laughs> what this? Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Was it, though? Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. Except she wasn't over there. The phone wouldn't have been over there. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Then, when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this. What is it, Mr. Wright? Excellent fucking question! She made to escape. Can you be more specific? She brushed aside my hand and ran. It was a terrible sight to see, like a doll of lard on a 
I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce that. Huh. She even kicked over an oil drum at me. An oil drum. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. That wasn't old shit. Sorry, I thought it was... If she wanted to escape, why didn't she run the other way? The other... Ah! Oh, the parking lot entrance. That's right! It doesn't make any sense that she would run from behind the partition to the oil drums. Excellent! More mysteries! I wish we could solve a few before finding more, though. So Miss Sky tried to run. I'm sorry my sister is so suspicious, Mr. Wright. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it. You have to believe me. I've got nothing. I've fucking got nothing again. Why is this important? The, uh, it was the floor plans just somewhere else. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Why am I stupid? Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me and I'll make you cough it all up. <clears throat> Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. V what? Order, order. What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies. Mm -hmm. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about. <laughs> Save. <sighs> Could be literally any one of these. She lied about the order of events. Miss Guy used that emergency phone before the murder. Uh, I see. I hadn't thought of that. That took the wind out of her sails. Um, Mr. Wright, I hate to bother you while you're celebrating your victory, but why would anyone use the emergency phone before the murder? Huh? Just when you think he can't sink any lower, he amazes us. I applaud you, Mr. Wright. You ordered the orange peel lunchbox, right? Fuck! Miss Guy tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Guy using the emergency phone. It would mean... Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? No, that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. I don't fucking know! This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room. Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office couldn't park an A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. 
I remember in your testimony, you said you brought a lunch for your boyfriend in the security guard room. Yes. Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables could be turned? Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished, and I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is he talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make much sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Ridgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? M me Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. So the picture kind of looked like it was taken in B Block. Maybe she like said it up like beforehand or something. Must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plan seems quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness. You. Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh- with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. I am struggling. Hmm. Boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. Before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B Block. That's quite a detour. You don't fucking say. Probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Hmm. This changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. What do you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Objection. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it... Oh, the dente. I'm so fucking confused. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, your honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get the wrong idea, I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Mm. 
Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Eggsworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. That was too close. I'm afraid that the cough of Queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Huh. Mr. Eggsworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to voice off on me. <laughs> Damn, okay. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to say a few. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, mister. Uh. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! <laughs> oh my god! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. You should not be! That's not how this works! She's guilty of bribing a judge now! Send this bitch to prison. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the lunch line motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she gonna pull out of her lunchbox this time? I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? No, you didn't. Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Is this about to be like another self-defense case? What? There was blood found on that shoe. Try lunch line for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. As I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Eggsworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed. Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Edgeworth, how many times in our trials have I presented evidence that wasn't okayed by the police department? The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective, as I mentioned previously. This shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. <sighs> Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. He is piss. You could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. This is not decisive evidence at all. Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results. How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very own eyes. Did you know? Compared to that, a five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? 
Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, writing testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This when the suspect is admitting she did it. But false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Star. Let's just get this over with. And you found this shoe at the scene of the crime. I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So, like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with a shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe is my secret weapon if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now, tell us what you did next. So you brought it to the forensics department. If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensics expert. And she got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on him. Well, the man was stabbed, after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. Fuck. As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You want to know something about blood tests, Rookie? Uh, well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four types. A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test where a mur whether a murder was committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of, done of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. That's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone's but Miss Lana's guys. Hmm. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. Can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some, like your client, she's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, Rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? No, it's just fucking disgusting, that's what. Let's see what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's cue? I don't know. I've got, like... Nothing to examine here. Please help. I have nothing. I can't examine anything about it. Is the game glitched? Oh, fuck. Problem with this evidence is here. Where? Uh. God damn it. As I thought, a waste of time. Well, that was a nice break. Let's return to the testimony, shall we? I'm gonna fucking lose it. Alright. I guess we're checking it thoroughly now. Now you want to do it, you asshole. This blood. It's my sister's, right? It appears so. On his right hand is bandaged when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. Ah! 
There's blood here too! On the sole of the shoe? It's gotta be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood, it's horrible. Hmm. This blood might be an impo important clue. Words, fuck. Okay. Personally, I am of the opinion that it is her blood. I didn't fucking hit the hitbox, did I? It was that the entire fucking time. I'm gonna kill myself. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie, or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm, indeed. There is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of this shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? <sighs> I am running out of shots at this! It's been an hour and I'm not even done with this trial yet. How much longer do we have to go? I don't know. Fuck, I'm looking it up. Oh! I feel so fucking stupid. Thank you, internet, for helping me out, because I would never have gotten that. The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows parts of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Eggsworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness? What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright, but it's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction, but then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. No, it's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. I've been trying to. <laughs> hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. Let's hear me. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. W what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard roman. Rawr. I thought that was a strange thing for a normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Hmm? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. W witness. Well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. W water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! You don't mean- Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the blood stains that would become evidence against her. What? That ties things up quite nicely. 
The blood stains left on the victims who tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil jump to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty. Erasing evidence. That reminds me. Miss Guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please! What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime, and she tried to conceal it. But... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. <laughs> Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? Me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well... I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Why are you not presenting all of the evidence at the beginning? God damn it, Angel Star. Can you just do things right for two fucking minutes? I hate this lady. Get her out of here, please. The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments, and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough up queen. Look at this. A photograph. I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the Alice fault in this photo! Get the text box out of here! Hey, it's clearly wet. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And... It seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right, what's or not? Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up, not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Can Mia tell me what she means for like two seconds instead of making her ghost tellings all cryptic and shit? Like, lady, you have borrowed time when you're talking to me. How about you skip the cryptic shit? Like, how about you skip the cryptic shit and just tell me what you mean? Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Objection! God damn it. Phoenix, what did you do? Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? N no, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph, the last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, Bright, are you saying there's a problem with the latest evidence? Yeah, I'll think later. <laughs> yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. Jesus. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. I would love to. If I knew what I was doing. What is that down there? Hang on, I'm gonna go back to my thing. Oh, okay, that's what that is. If I knew what it was called, I would have 
Okay, I don't know exactly what about it is wrong because the thing that I'm looking up doesn't like tell me, but um, like it didn't tell me for this specific one, but apparently it's this. I had a hunch, but I wasn't sure, so. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Eggsworth. Your Honor. You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part on a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see. And I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. So what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. Why did I have three exclamation points there? What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth the muffler is related to this case. It's the phone. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, uh, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Ugh. Mm. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank God, it's at the end. Whoa. It seems we will have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend Sus. <laughs> I swear to God. I found myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Ugh, that was close, but we made it, at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry. To be continued. Thank fuck, it's been an hour. <laughs> yes, I would like to say, please, please, please. Uh, well, that does it for today's episode of Ace Attorney. Holy shit, I feel like an idiot. That's gonna be a fun one to edit. Anyway, if you liked it, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Hit that little bell icon so you don't miss another upload. Hope you all enjoyed the show, my little lemons. I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye!